Okay. So, so I'm going to give you a very broad overview of computer vision. Um, and computer vision, uh, in simple terms, is just ability of computers to see. Okay. And it has different names, you know, image understanding, um, machine vision, robot vision, uh, image analysis, they are different uh, terms have been interchangeably used, but the main idea is given a picture, uh, what computer can tell about a picture, okay? So when you have a video, video is a sequence of images, lots of pictures, and then it's also called video understanding. So um, now the looking at this kind of picture, you know, people say uh, picture is worth a thousand words, you know to describe what is happening in this picture. You know, you as a human look at it and you see there are, um, you know, somebody, you know, died, maybe it was suicide bombing in Israel, and these people are mourning, and you know, there's this uh, um, coffin there, and so on. There's lots of things happening. That's why you can describe this picture with lots of, lots of words, like thousand words. So at the end, I mean, essentially, that's what we want computer to be able to do, you know, to understand what is there and describe, which is long way from now, but that's the kind of background. The other way to look at it is that, you know, if you look at a video like this, um, and um, this has lots of images, not maybe 1,000 images, but lots of images, and um, we can uh, describe this um, video by actually one word, you know, and which is the hunt, and basically is describing the hunt. So um, now if you look at the image, you know, uh, image essentially is a 2D array. It's a matrix of numbers, the 2D array in your data structure and computer science, and each element in the array is an intensity value at grade level, yes? And um, so when you have the zero gray level, you know, it's a completely black. When it's a 255, it's a completely white. And if it's between, you know, then it's a gray. That's the idea. And uh, so if you have a color image, then we have three 2D arrays, you know. So we have an array like this for red, for green, and for blue. And uh, so one important thing about image is the resolution, you know, uh, how many rows and how many columns we have in an image. Um, and, um, you know, in old days, these images used to be very small, 128 by 128 or 256 by 256, 512 by 512 used to be a big, big thing, and then 640 by 480, that's a VGA resolution. But these days, as you know, I mean, you can get a 12 megapixel camera, which will have, you know, uh, 12 million pixels, you know, it's a huge, huge image. Um, so then, now if you look at the image like this, um, so if you look at a small piece of it on a sweater, it looks like that. And if you look at actually numbers, these are the numbers. So these are the gray levels which your program has to deal with, okay? So you write a program which will look at these numbers and make sense of that. That while there's a sweater, there's edges and, and things like that. Person's wearing a sweater and so on, okay? So, so as you know, there are different image formats like TIFF, PGM, BBM, GIF, and JPEG and so on. And similarly, video is sequence of images. We have just have many images, okay? And typically, we will have 30 images per second of a video. Uh, and um, then again, we have different formats of video like AVI, MPEG, QuickTime, and so on. So this is a video clip. Um, and uh, so in this video, as you see, actually there are 16 images that are being shown in, shown in succession, you know. When you see that, then you start seeing the motion of the camera or, or the objects. So that's the, that's the difference between a video and a single image, okay? So now, the, if you look at, you know, what actually is the physics of imaging, you know, like how do you take a picture and what are the important things which affect, you know, the picture you get. So um, very simple model is called Lambrentian model of image and depends on the light source where the light is. If, if there's no light, you cannot see the picture. It will be all dark. So light is important. Either you have the, um, the light source from the from the sun or from the from the one of the one of the um, 
you know, your tab in LAMP and so on. So do I need to do anything here, uh, Oliver? Is this related to this program? Not really, is that right? Yes. OK. Yeah, OK. So one is a light source. The other is the where the camera is located, you know, um, which is the location of camera, uh, orientation of camera, and also the those are called extrinsic parameters of camera, which are the external. And then there are intrinsic parameters of camera, which are like focal length. So it depends on the camera and depends on what the scene look like. You know, that picture will depend on that also. Okay, so now one thing you will, you know, here again and again in this class, the world is made up of 3D, three dimension, you know, so we have X, Y, Z, we, we have 3D. If it's just a floor, then it's a 2D, you know, just a, the wall is just 2D. But this is a 3D space. Now when you take a picture, it is mapped, the 3D is mapped to 2D, because picture is a flat, right? So therefore, um, we have to realize that and whatever the techniques we are going to develop uh, will, be, um, will be used, um, um, will be used this understanding uh, of this fact that we are projecting the 3D to the 2D, okay? And um, so we are in a way losing one dimension. And that's why it is hard, computer vision, because we have a 2D image and we want to talk about what is in 3D, okay? Now, computer graphics is another area which is actually inverse of computer vision. So computer graphics, what we do, we have a 3D model and we project that on the 2D screen and see what is displayed on the screen. We can look at the video and so on. So it is from 3D to 2D, and but vision we have from 2D to 3D in a way. So the main thing is that, well, what is this projection model, you know? So the most simple model that how the 3D is projected 2D is called pinhole camera model or perspective projection. So if we have object like this, uh, which is coordinate of this is X, Y, Z, X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate, and say this is our camera, it's very simple. We just have a lens, which is just a point, it's a pin. So that's called pinhole camera. And this is our image plane. This image is formed here. So we are going to, you know, take the ray of light, we'll hit at this point, and it will be reflected back, it'll go through the lens, and it'll hit the image plane like this. So image of this object will be formed like this. That's what you will see. Now here, we are showing from 2D to 1D. As you see, the image is a line, it's a 1D. If it is a plane, then it's a 2D. So, but this is, you know, going from 2D to 1D, and in the actual image, we'll go from 3D to 2D. So now what happens that this is object height, this is the image height, image of that object, this is where the lens is located, so the distance from the lens to the image plane is called f, which is the focal length of the, of the camera, okay? And the distance from the lens to the, to the object is called the z, which is a depth, okay? So now, as you see, there are two triangles. There's one is a big triangle like this, and there's a small triangle, and these are equivalent triangles. So therefore, you can take a side from here and divide the side from there, and sign from here, divide side from there, they're equal. So that, that's why we got y, small y, which is the image coordinates, divided by uppercase y, and then f from small triangle, and z from the long triangle, okay? Now one thing is, when this image is formed, it's formed upside down. So therefore, actually, the, in your brain, in your eye, that's where the image is formed, and you have a way to, you know, invert it because, you know, that's a physics, you know, light hits, you know, ray comes in, cement. so that's why we are calling minus y, okay? So that is, the, that tells you that if you know the x, y, z location in the 3D world, so x, y, z, uppercase x, uppercase y, uppercase z will be a 3D location, and the small x, small y is image location. So image location y is given by this according to these two triangles. 
you can do the same thing for the x and that will be given by that. So therefore this tells you what is the perspective projection or pinhole camera when you take a picture that how the point in 3D is mapped to the image and that is a fundamental model. It's very simple, very very intuitive but you know you need to know that. Okay. So now then there's another projection which is called orthographic projection uh, which is that if you take a picture from very far from where the scene is like, like UAV unmanned aerial vehicle you know they are drones they are flying around so they have a camera they take picture there's you know thousands of feet from the from the ground so there there's no perspective effect so it's you know the distance is so far so that there's no perspective effect which means there that they won't depend on the depth the distance so it, so we will approximate this model the small x and small y is similar to the actual uppercase for x and y and there's it doesn't depend how what is their depth that's called orthographic projection it's a simpler model so now one thing you will notice that um, because um, the projection is from 3D to 2D, you lose third dimension, so there are many methods to recover 3D in computer vision, and that's what we do humans. See, our vision system is 2D because we have a retina after the eye, it's like a film of a camera, the picture is formed. But we have a way to perceive 3D, and the way we do it is the, we have these different cues, like we have two eyes, which is stereo and we look at motion, then that gives you us a 3D and there are some other cues. And that's what computer vision techniques are doing, that they are trying to recover 3D information from these 2D images. And that 3D information is called 3D shape. And so therefore there are many methods which are called shape from X. And uh, it can, X can be stereo, so it'll be shape from stereo. It can be motion, shape from motion, shape from shading, shape from texture, contours, and many, many different ways. So a stereo example is like this. So you are looking at these billiard things. And um, the, um, you, you, what you see, two pictures. Left eye sees this, right eye sees this. So if you look at actually how the image is formed, then the image in left eye is a little shifted compared to right eye. The shift or disparity actually give you idea how far the object is. Okay? And um, that the way we actually recover 3D. I can tell this guy is closer to me as compared to Gonzalo, you know, because that's further away. I have this capability. And essentially one of the cue I'm using is because I have two eyes. And when many people don't have a stereo capability, even though they have two eyes, so they won't be able to tell only using that cue, but they will use other cues. Okay? So that's the stereo. And suppose this is what we expect computer to do. We give it two images, and we want to come up with a 3D shape. And this is one of the algorithms which will get you how this uh, part of the car, Renault car, is, you know, um, recovered from these two images. And the other thing is shading. You know, you can recover 3D shape from shading. And um, that's the reason actually the makeup industry is there for women, you know. So, so as you know, you know, women do makeup and there's billions of dollars being spent. And the reason, you know, you do makeup that the shape you want people to perceive is much more pleasing as compared to the way your shape is actually faced. So you put you know thick layer of makeup and so on. You you make the nose pointed and you know more appealing. So what is this shading is doing is actually deceiving the human vision system. So you are reconstructing a 3D shape which is different than actually it's and it actually works. So, so now the same thing, the shading, the idea is that how the gradual variation of these shading give you the 3D shape information. So on the left side is a picture of a woman without the makeup. On the right side is with the makeup and it actually make difference, more interesting, more pleasing. Okay, so, so now if you look at more, more detail, 
um, that how actually image is formed and the image is formed depends on the light source as I told you we have to have light source if it's completely dark we cannot get an image where light rays has to hit the object and being reflected to the camera and then that's a bit you make a picture so this is the light source and then it depends on the what is the object look like. So it's a, it's a computer mouse, or it is this uh, you know um, bottle, or you know chair. There are different shapes, and when you have different shapes, you know you have different orientation of the points in the shape. So suppose this is you know one slice of the shape. So here, if you look at this point the shape is, is, is normal to this, is oriented like this. But if you look at like this one, the normal is oriented like that. You know, because it gives you the orientation of the shape. So in Lambrensian model, the simple image formation is that it depends on the angle between the, where the light source is and how the shape is oriented, the angle theta. And that's what the intensity we will get. So the S is a light source and then n is surface number. So the gray level we will get in the image will depend on the dot product of these two vectors, okay? So now using the simple model, actually you can s synthetically generate some images. These are synthetically generated images of a vase, okay? And here they are showing a different light sources. You know, the light source is, you know, minus one, minus one, one. These are the x, y, z then you will get image like this. You know, this will be dark here, this will be more brighter, and so on, there are different light sources, okay? So now this is the, what the graphics will do. You have 3D model of the vase, you assume where the light source is, you can synthesize image. But what in computer vision we are gonna do, taking the image and we are gonna recover where the light source was, where is the, what is the shape of object and so on. So which is, you know, much harder. So another thing is shape from texture, where you know the texture also give you idea about the 3D shape. Now let's assume you have a sheet of paper. You have these circles of the equal diameter and equal density spread out. Now, if you if you you know uh, take the sheet of paper and you know orient it differently, like this as shown. So the the size and, and take a picture of that, then the size of these circles and the shape of these circles will change. Suppose these, these, uh, these circles will become ellipses as you see here, depending on how it is, you know, uh, situated. And the density will also change. And that gives you a 3D uh, um, cue using the texture. This is a texture because, you know, the same thing repeated is called texture. So that's another cue that you can use a shape from texture to recover 3D. Um, then the most interesting thing is the motion, okay? So let's say you look at this. This is called moving like displays. There are these dots, okay? Now you look at it, you don't know what this is. You know, there can be anything. But now when I start playing, now you can start seeing what is this object. Can anybody say? Is a person walking, is that right? So, so it is very vivid that we have this, um, this idea of this person um, walking but looking at these dots and we humans have this capability to do that. Now, um, you know, right now you are looking at, you are using all other cues, like you are using two eyes, you are using texture and all those things. But the best way to test this is that when all other cues are masked, so if you go outside in dark, there's no light, and there's some guy on a bike, and bike has reflectors. Now if the bike is sitting there, and the guy is just you know, on the bike, not moving, you don't see anything. But as soon as the guy will start riding a bike, you will start seeing that there's a bike, there's a person. So that way, you are masking all other cues and you are able to use the motion. So motion is very interesting and we will do a lot of, lot of things in motion. So for example, you can use the motion for 3D reconstruction. So these are the two images and then you, know, there are, you can reconstruct and get a 3D. And here is nice, um, so I need to get out of this, uh, Oliver, to 
to increase my volume like uh, uh, can I do it here like uh, where's the speaker um, speaker so if I get out is it okay from the PowerPoint yeah it's okay get out. get out then do it again okay it's not playing uh, no I'm I want to do the speaker here oh. so so what we do is uh, so continue? Continue recording. Okay, yeah. good. So the, I don't have to do again recording here? No, you, you don't have to. Are you sure? Okay. Okay. So, so there's a nice uh, video here I want you to see. Uh, this is a nice thing uh, which Microsoft have come up with. This is Z Rick Zelisky. Okay, so the, so the second book I showed you, the second link for the book, it's actually his author. Zick Zelensky. So you saw him as this picture. Okay, so um, let's um, continue. So this gives you uh, really a product uh, which is reconstructing the 3D from a bunch of images. It's pretty interesting. And we will learn in this class some basic fundamentals to how to do that. Okay, 
So um, the the main um, thing we will um, estimate or compute from images or video is this optical flow, and you will actually write a program to do that. So this optical flow is that each pixel will find out how that pixel is moving with respect to previous frame. So here we are showing the direction for using this color wheel. So if it's moving this way, then it'll be green. If it's moving this way, then it'll be red and so on. So these are all 360 degrees. And the intensity show you what's a motion. So this optical flow, so the motion is X and Y, what U V. So there are two numbers to show that we, this is one way to show using a color wheel. And as you see that when the person is you know, moving hands, then those pixels are highlighted. So that's a basic operation in computer vision, given say two images, how you compute this uh, motion, pixel-wise motion, okay? And that can be used for lots of things. So then other interesting thing is that if you have a video like this, as I showed you, uh, you can stitch these frames together to make a one image or a mosaic. Because you know when you take a one picture, you won't be able to see everything. So you take a, these, you know, video, and then you can make a mosaic of that. And we learn how to do that automatically using a computer program. And um, then there are lots of applications of computer vision, um, you know, including the face recognition. Uh, which is a biometric, and they are already using it at the airports, and object recognition, uh, video surveillance and monitoring, uh, remote sensing, these drones we have, they are taking videos, and they are analyzing uh, what is uh, in the scene and making decisions. And robotics, of course, is um, lots of uh, you know, application of computer vision because the sensing for robots is vision. Vision is one of the sensors which you provide. And then computer graphics. So I'm going to, give, going to go quickly and show you some examples of this. And most of these are our work in our lab. And, but you know, there are lots of other groups working in this area also. So let's look at object recognition. So we want to find people in images. You know, we are given an image, we want to say, is there a person or not? Does image I contain an image of a person or not? So suppose these are the images, and the computer will say, yes, you know, there's a person. Okay? And suppose these are no instances because there's no person there. And now we can do more than that. You can say, well, can you localize where the person is? So you want to put a box around that, and these are the boxes which are shown here. So we want to, we want to learn how to do it in using a computer program. Now this is even harder that here the people are very, very small, and even for humans it's difficult. Or you know, look at here, these are the people from UAV. So it's a difficult, but you know, we have methods to actually do that, to say, well, there's a person, even though that's cost, costing a shadow. So then there's um, this um, set of these images where you know we have airplanes. And these are motorcycles. So can the computer program tell you, say, well, this picture is a motorbike, this picture is airplane, this picture is a person, and so on. So those are things we are going to learn. So the face recognition, um, the idea is that we have a data set, and uh, we are given an input image like this, and we want to say, does this exist in our data set. You know, maybe we have data set of all criminals you know, in, in this county or something. So how do you do it automatically? Okay. Um, other more interesting thing is that can you recognize facial expressions of a person you know, from pictures? Say, well, oh, this guy is you know, raising eyebrows, or this guy is uh, smiling, this lady. And so, so these are actually more advanced things for face images, not saying that which person it is, but you know what is the state of emotion of a person. Um, this project we did a few years ago, where we want to look at that when the person is driving a car, whether he's alert or not. You know, so there was a camera in the dashboard of a car and looking at uh, the person, and then identifying the eyes location, how it's moving, and so on, and that that gives you an idea and these messages are being um, produced to say that while well, person is rotating head and so on. 
another interesting application of computer vision is in lip reading. So you guys know, like you know, you can talk to like an iPhone and you can recognize your speech. And um, um, but when there is a very lot of noise, suppose if you are in a, you know um, noisy bar or if you are in a airplane cockpit, there are lots of noise of engines and so on. So the speech recognition system will not work there. So there, that's where you know you need a lip movement, and and that's what we humans also do. Uh, we supplement the audio with the lip movement, and you know, uh, hearing impaired people actually that's the way they they understand what you're saying. So um, so essentially, computer vision can do that. You know, so this is a video example uh, here. The person is saying these. English alphabets, you know, A, B, C, D, and so on. And we have a method which can actually recognize these letters uh, using the how the uh, face is moving and so on. So, so we have in our group, we have a lot of work in what is the area called video surveillance monitoring. So we are one of the top group in the world. And uh, so the idea there is that, if, as you know, there are millions and millions of cameras all over, you know, places in cities, airports, shopping malls, casinos, all streets and all those, you know, and pe people are keep adding more cameras, more cameras. So now the question is that, you know, how you analyze these videos which are coming from these cameras and make sense of that because you don't have enough people to sit there and watch these videos. You know, people get crazy because they look at so many videos. So, so now the basic uh, steps are given a video that you want to first identify the objects of interest, you know, the objects which are moving. You want to detect the objects, you want to track these objects from frame to frame, and then you want to categorize objects. Well, is the object a person, or is it a car, or a bicycle, or airplane, and so on. And then you want to look at what these objects are doing. What are the events, what are the actions, activities, okay? So, um, so here are some examples, you know, like um, say around UCF here. So we have a camera that looks at that and look at people, and we can detect these, put the bounding boxes, and we can track them. And there are some of these examples here. Uh, we have systems which will do that. So we learn some basic uh, techniques in this class that how we can identify the moving object, you know, and how we can track. So this is another project we just completed. Uh, this is the um, high resolution sensor, which is a 360 degree view of the airport. You know, this is from the Logan Airport in Boston. So we get a high resolution video, and then we want to be able to analyze that because there are lots of people there. It's very crowded, so you need, uh, you know, um, so like look at this one. So as you see. There are many, many people here, and we want to be able to detect each person, track it, and know where the person comes from, where is he going, and so on. So that's the surveillance, you know, idea, uh, the, the project uh, we just completed. Um, so now then there's a whole area of the drones, uh, UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle. There are thousands and thousands of drones in the war in Afghanistan and Iraq and you know, everywhere. Um, so these uh, are the different um, models. You know, Predator is very common and Global Hawk, and these are for the defense purposes. And then there's a micro drone, which is for civilian purposes. Actually, we have a couple of these. They're very light drones, and there's a camera, and um, it can fly itself. You know, the idea is that it doesn't need a person, uh, and you know, it flies. And um, these are, in the war, they are being controlled from state of Nevada, you know, about 8,000 miles from, from Afghanistan. You know. And the person is sitting there and you know, controlling, and this, the UAV is there, actually. And then it's giving you live video, so the person is looking at that. So right now, these um, videos are being watched by humans, because we don't have a techniques to actually analyze these videos automatically uh, with a lot of accuracy. So ultimately, the goal is that can you look at these videos and analyze it automatically so that it can save a lot of time of these you know, uh, people. 
So we, we have actually our own little UAV we made this like a balloon and we have this camera control thing here. So again in this kind of videos uh, where camera is moving the basic steps are same um, which includes the detection, tracking and behavior, uh, activity recognition. The only one difference is that we have to compensate the camera motion because if the camera is static then we just you know find the moving object and so on. So um, that's why you know, we have built this system called COCO. It will remove the camera motion, again detect the objects and track it. And, and here are some examples, you know, like so this is an aerial video here. And then we are um, making a mosaic here incrementally that area it is going through different frames. And then uh, we um, do that and at the end you will see the whole area covered in this video, the mosaic I showed you before, so it's similar to that. Um, but he's moving this way, you know, around the road, so that's why the road is being shown there. So we have a program which will automatically do that, and actually you will implement that. Um, so here is another example. So this is the infrared video. You know, these regular videos, you know, you need light, and it captures how much light is reflected. But the infrared video, it captures how much heat is there, you know. So the hot things like engines and so on will be hot uh, as compared to, you know, trees and so on. So the same thing, we are generating a mosaic. It's going through this area. And then we have the mask for each frame. And once we do that, then we can actually detect the object which is moving. Now, as you see, here everything is moving, but we only want interest in the car which is moving. So that's what this is showing. This car enters here, and we are able to detect even though there's a motion. So uh, now, after that, you can then track. That's the ultimate goal of that you want to track the same car. So this same car has you know one color. So the green always in every frame is green. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just telling you that when you, when you get a mosaic, so actually, you know, you have to have that, because see, you are making a mosaic is a big, so you want to say, well, this picture, you have to transform so that it fit into the mosaic, fit in the mosaic like that, that's a mask. So you have this transformation, because it cannot, it is, it has a different transformation with respect to each image. So that's what, we are going to talk about more about that also. Okay, so now, there's another area, now this was looking at just a very small area and one camera. Now if you want to say observe a whole you know, block of a city, so you need multiple cameras. Okay, so that's called wide area surveillance. So here we have six cameras, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is actually around Ohio State campus. You will see Ohio State Stadium there. So this was generated by those guys. And uh, so the idea here is that you have thousands of vehicles. You know, it's a huge area. It's a big image, 4,000 by 3,000 or something, each frame. Uh, so, but, um, and there are six cameras, so we can stick them together and make a, this big, wide area uh, video. And that's what, that's a stadium, football stadium of Ohio State. And I heard that's the largest stadium, I think, in the U.S., uh, probably after Michigan. So now we want to be analyze those kind of um, images, and this is a piece of that. So here I mean, we have many, many cars, and we want to track them, which means we want to have the same color of the car in all the frames. Then we are doing the right thing. And here, as you see, that even though it's going under the bridge, we have a same... Oh, same color for those cars. So it's dealing with occlusion, and there's actually a person going somewhere. Here, the green person here is crossing, and we are able to track also. So so the, this is, you know, very hot area, and we have a couple of projects we are doing this work for. The other thing, of course, is the unmanned ground vehicle. You know, this was unmanned aerial vehicle. This is called UGV. And um, a few years ago, we did this, you know, there was a DARPA grand challenge that can you have a car which can drive without a driver, you know. And, and UCF actually did pretty well. Uh, right now, as you know, that Google has a car, you know. 
So they have driven 25,000 miles and there was a blind person, went in the car, go to the grocery store, do the shopping, came back and, you know, safe. In the state of Nevada, it's legal to drive those Google cars. And soon, you know, these will be legal in different states. So that's an amazing thing that, uh, you know, technology is doing. And this was in, in that direction. So, you know, we had this little um, thing that we did many years ago. So this car is driving itself. It's going to come to the stop sign and then look around and decide if you're on a safe to turn and it will turn. So it's based on the computer vision techniques and detecting people and so on and then it's being controlled by the computer and it is, you know, going to do that. So that's, you know, pretty, pretty interesting, exciting application of computer vision. Uh, then there's a whole area of looking at what people are doing. So this is, you know, what are the actions, what are the activities people are doing. So like there are these standard data sets. So simply if you can come up with a method which can say that, you know, people are jumping or they are walking and so on. And uh, there are many data sets, you know, there's this one, say boxing, hand clapping, hand waving and so on. Um, then we have um, our own data set we have put together and you know all the people are using. Uh, these are the realistic videos uh, for sports. You know, can you write a program which can tell while well, this video is of a dive, this is of kicking, this is of riding a horse, this is of golf swing. So the pretty challenging applications. Uh, we have um, another, there's another data set where we look at multiple views uh, we have six cameras there, uh, say, checking a watch action or standing up. Um, then we have um, these YouTube videos uh, of these um, actions. And these are much difficult videos uh, than the other one I showed you um, because these are user uploaded videos, a lot of clutter and um, you know, they are not controlled. Actually, not the idea, idea is going to play. So, so you got an idea. Um, um, so, right now we are using the only the video information, uh, not audio, but that's another thing that you can use. Um, so, this is another data set we have put together called UCF50. There are 50 different uh, actions. Uh, these are 25. And so this, somehow this doesn't have audio. Uh, these are other 25. And actually we are working on making it 100. Uh, soon we'll have 100 actions. So, so the, all these application of that is, you can relate to, like see that when you go to Google, you can search millions and millions of documents based on text. Now, it will be nice if you can search the videos. Uh, and video has a lot of information because it's not uh, like words, it's you know pictures and so on. So the computer vision idea is that how do you take the videos, convert them in symbols, say well there are three people, they are doing this and that, and then you can do the search, what Google is doing. So that's the idea of coming with these techniques, uh, doing that. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, Microsoft Connect is another game changer because as I told you earlier that one limitation of um, picture regular camera is that it, you lose 3D but in this thing actually it gives you 3D directly you know they have a new technique to get a 3D so here you will get a 3D image and also the RGB image okay so there is this challenge uh, where they have 50,000 different gestures uh, for the Kinect, which ultimately can be used for the games. Um, so the challenge is can you recognize those, those gestures, okay? So actually we participated and, you know, Oliver sitting in the back who is recording the video, he came a seventh place and he got actually free Kinect, you know, they sent him as a free uh, gift. So, so the, here's the idea. So you have, um, these are the depth images, you know, the first row. And the second row is the actually RGB images. So Connect will give you both. 
So now there are different kind of gestures, you know, like a driving signals, referee signals, and you know, music notes, and so on. And you want to write a computer program to be able to recognize those. You know? So, um, so we 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 did that, and um, like here are the, some examples. And um, the challenge here is that um, we have only one example for each gesture. So that's called one shot, only one example. We don't have many examples of that. Um, so here's some more examples of um, these, and they have lots of lots of data for these kind of things. Um, okay, and pretty interesting gestures. Um, so we have more. Maybe I shouldn't. Okay, so you got an idea. Okay, the another thing we are working on is the crowds because you know most of the pic videos I showed you, uh, they are you know few people. Now what happens when there are thousands and thousands of people? It's a pretty complex uh, you know uh, problem. So so in computer science there's the society called Association of Computing Machinery. That's a you know professional society. And they have this uh, monthly magazine called Communication of SEM. And so, actually, last December, we had this article which appeared on the on the cover page of this. And this is the work where we are looking at these high-density crowds. You know, so these are like political rallies, religious festival, marathon, and high-density you know moving objects like traffic and so on. And so, we want to analyze those. You know, one of the problem we are interested in that can we do this tracking in this kind of crowd, you know? It will be very difficult even for humans. So we have a method which will, you know, take these people, each person is very, very small, you know? And then we can do actually tracking of these different people. As you see, we have these tracks for different person, same color. Um, so then, you know, we have another video which is shown here, um, you know, again, this is very challenging. You know, there's so many people, everybody is wearing the same shirt and so on. Um, and um, this is another video. And uh, also it's pretty small and we can also uh, track here these different people. Um, <clears throat> So as you see, we can track these people for quite a long time. Um, and it can be, you know, that we are interested in some important person we want to track, you know, from where he enters, where he's going, where he's exiting, and it's a pretty important application. Um, other thing we can do is, um, you know, look at the behaviors of crowds, you know. So this is like a call bottleneck, you know, and lots of people going through, you know, narrow passage. And this is the application, you know, where people are departing, which are opposite to that. And this is that when there's a crowd, people actually start forming lanes, because that's the best way to, you know, move out. And this is the example, you know, that people move in arches and rings. And um, this is that there's a blocking, you know. There's so many people that actually they cannot do anything. It's, it's block each other. So, so the question is, giving these videos, can we actually recognize this behavior by computer programming? That's what you know we have done that here. Okay, another application is where am I? You know, like you go somewhere, you get lost, you take a picture, and then program can tell you that this is a GPS location. You know, let's say you have a camera that doesn't have GPS, and GPS doesn't work then you know you want to be able to do that using the images so we have a method to do that given this picture it will tell you that um, actually it was taking somewhere here in pittsburgh and this is the longitude latitude of that uh, that picture so uh, that's you know shown here um, now you can do this uh, extend to the video. So instead of a one picture, you have video. You go through 
say some city, you record a video, and you want to say, well, how did I drive the car? What was my trajectory? And this is actually showing you that. You know, the red one showing you, you are somewhere in Pittsburgh, and this is a trajectory you drove. And we can do that you know, using computer vision algorithm. So the last thing is about the what can computer vision do for computer graphics. You know? Because all these um, uh, movies you see, like Matrix and all these, you know, Avatar and all these things, there's a lot of vision being used there. Okay? And um, so uh, one application is that can you take this video like that, remove an object, and still the video looks very realistic. And that's what we are doing here because we are segmenting and then removing it and you know doing this blending like that. The other application is like this. So let's say you have a video of this um, the garden sequence and you want to take the tree and put it in a different background which is shown here. And it has to look realistic video. And that's what we have done. So you see this is artificial video but you know, you won't be able to tell that, well, this is not real. And this is a segmentation method which can, you know, transform this called layer-based video composition. Um, let's see, look at this one. So you want to take this doll and put in this background with the flowers. And this is all artificial, you know. So now you want to take this mom and daughter and put it in this outdoor, you know. So that's what this is. So it looks pretty good. Okay, so one other thing, uh, interesting thing we have done very recently is, is start using audio in addition to video. And here we want to identify the objects which are moving and sounding. Okay, so, oh. The, you will see here some examples, and uh, you'll see the ground truth, baseline, and proposed method. So, like this, a you know, test video. So here we want to identify where is this ball which is sounding. So segmenting, sounding, and moving objects. So here yeah, there are two objects which are moving. So these are our results here. And this is the ground truth. Okay, so one last thing. Uh, uh, last Sunday, actually, New York Times had a very uh, nice article on the front page about how the robots, you know, are replacing the humans uh, in lots of these manufacturing jobs and so on, and uh, and how the vision is playing a part. So this is a factory in Netherlands with Philips. Philips make very good shavers, you know electric shavers and uh, they all this is being done in uh, in with the robots and vision and uh, this is what people will do you know same thing in china you know they will have lots of people and lots of labor so the so the main point is that you know the computer vision can be used in many different applications and it's changing the whole um, game and um, you are going to learn lots of interesting techniques in this first course and uh, you will be able to use these then you know after you graduate you want to get a job or you want to go to graduate school and I think that's what we are going to 